right, let's go ahead and uh, start diving into our first one. Listen, like we said at the top, Marvel has been quiet for quite some time, and maybe for good reason. Um, as this past week, we've been getting a ton of inf information that's been coming out on Marvel Studios. Uh, one of the biggest news that dropped uh, earlier this week, ladies and gentlemen, is that we could potentially have our new big villain announced for uh, the Marvel's cinematic universe. Uh, this story actually comes to us guys uh, from Deadline.com letting us know that Jonathan Majors has officially been cast uh, or joins the Marvel Cinematic Universe, lands a major role in the next Ant-Man movie. So again, this comes for us from uh, Deadline.com. Jonathan Majors says exclusive. After, making, um, um, after a star-making turn, in HBO's hit series, Lovecraft Country, Jonathan Major is now ready to make his mark in the Marvel Cinematic Universe in a big way. Majors has been tapped for one of the lead roles in the next Ant-Man movie opposite Paul Rudd and Evangeline Lilly. The studio had no comment, but sources close to the project say he's likely to pay uh, play the supervillain Kang the Conqueror. It also says that sources add that uh, like with so many new characters in the MCU, there could be a twist on how the character is featured in future films, uh, but as of now, he is likely to be one of the main villains in the next installment of the franchise. It does say that Peyton Reed, who directed the first film, returns to helm the latest installment as well, although it does have a different writer with uh, Jeff Love, uh, Loveness uh, that's penning the script. Um, and I'm trying to say it says here. Uh, although it is possible that he could uh, be used differently in the movie, in the comics, Kang is a time-traveling entity who had battles with everyone from Thor to Spider-Man to the entire Avengers team. Now, if you are um, not familiar with Jonathan um, Major's work, or if he looks kind of familiar, it does say the summer of 2020 has been pretty good for Jonathan Majors, both on the film and TV front. He began starring in Spike Lee's epic war drama, The Five Bloods, uh, where he played one of the sons of the army unit that ventures back to Vietnam in search for their gold fortune and fallen squad soldier. Uh, he followed that up with Lovecraft Country, created by Misha Green and produced by Jordan Peele uh, and J.J. Abrams. Now, um, I haven't had the chance to watch The Five Bloods yet. I believe Indy certainly might have. I got to go ahead and check that out. Um, but have you had the opportunity, Stuart, to check them out in Lovecraft Country on HBO Max by any chance? Uh, yeah, I saw the uh, first three episodes of that show. Um the show itself, I think, is our all right, but his acting in it is really good. Yeah, I'm I'm on the, I'm on the same fence with you there in regards to the show. Like the show is okay. It's a, it's a little bit odd. I I want to try and continue to stick with it a little bit more and see how the storytelling is going to certainly flesh itself out. So the, the the show itself is okay, but Jonathan Majors definitely stands out to me. So when they announced this guy, I was really really pleased, and I I am going to go ahead and check out the Five Bloods here. But uh, Stewart. Uh, Jonathan Majors potentially here as King the Conqueror, according to the sources of Deadline. Um, how do you think that this certainly fits uh, into uh, pretty much an, the idea of an Ant-Man movie? Um, and what do you think this means overall for uh, the MCU in general now that we have somebody like Jonathan Majors potentially playing King the, Con uh, King the Conqueror? I can say this, uh, I think pretty safely, if they have him as the main villain in uh, Ant-Man and Ant-Man be be ends up being the one to uh, take him down on his own, I feel like you are definitely going to be upsetting a lot of uh, Marvel fans who feel like, you know, Kane the Conqueror should be more like a Avengers villain and not just like a one-off uh, solo villain for another superhero. But mm -hmm. at the same time, uh, I do think like if they are going to introduce him in any uh, MCU film, but like still keep him around for possibly like more uh, Avenger future appearances and all that, uh, I do think Ant-Man does make a lot of sense because you know with ant-man they're the ones like dealing with the quantum realm type stuff which we you know we've saw we've seen in uh avengers endgame can not only lead to like you know traveling to other like dimensions but also can lead to straight up time travel as well so it does make sense that you know in in um, terms of like you know what ant-man kind of does you know with the potential of the quantum realm it does make sense that king the conqueror the king the conqueror would be more interested in trying to get like that kind of technology for himself i guess so yeah it, it's 
I'm very, yeah, the thing I'm most interested in is that, yeah, with it being an Ant-Man, part of me is kind of expecting an Iron Man 3 type twist where it's all Mm. going to turn out to be like just a random, like a normal person, essentially. But, you know, he has the persona of being someone like this, you know, really powerful warlord, uh, King the Conqueror, but not sure. Yeah, you know what? You bring up a good point because I, I, you know, just reading the article itself talking about how how he could possibly pre- be presented with a little bit of a of a twist, right? That he may not be showcased accordingly as to how we probably expect. I'm kind of wondering if that's along the lines of like maybe he's not going to come out in Ant Man three and can be completely decked out in like Kang the Conqueror costume. Like I like I could easily see the idea of him being somebody that's trying to hide his true identity but making his presence felt in the movie sort of thing like maybe the reveal of him being kang the conqueror isn't something that we get revealed to and towards until like towards the end of the movie like i just feel when it comes to kang the conqueror he's such a big character that you probably don't want to necessarily waste him uh as sort of like a, a one-off so while i do think that uh, according to this he he probably plans on being the main villain um I, I can still certainly see him having an even bigger role to the entire mcu and this just really be sort of our introductory to um uh, to this particular character so like it wouldn't surprise me if we get to see more of jonathan majors as i don't want to say as himself but you know without the big old get up and makeup and prosthetic and costume and whatever the case may be and then all of a sudden it, it comes out by the end of the movie that this guy is more than what he certainly is uh playing up to be but you know the idea of king the conqueror being an ant-man it certainly makes sense in the sense of um you know, like you mentioned, if 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 Scott and uh, Hank and them are going to be messing around with the quantum realm, I mean, Scott is the one that came up with the idea of time traveling in the first place for Endgame. Maybe this is maybe this is the reason why uh, King the Conqueror is, has popped up in here, either to confront Scott, maybe to get some more intel and and play a pivotal role in the movie on these two, so that you know he he has a maybe Kang has a broader plan for everybody in the MCU at some point in time. But I I I do think that this is um I do think that this is possible. And you know what, Stuart, going back to what Peyton Reed mentioned a couple of weeks back about how big uh, this movie was going to be, right? That it wasn't going to be just because Ant-Man's a smaller character. It isn't like we're going to be focusing on Ant-Man and his neighborhood, right? That it's going to be more sprawling uh, and, and, and much bigger in a sense. I'm wondering if that has a lot to do with maybe just Kang the Conqueror and his presence being in there, um, that it, that something like that does deserve something more sprawling. What are your thoughts, though? Uh, honestly, I could see that, especially something I just thought of, uh, during all this is more than likely if they go on, they go full on, like he is King the Conqueror, his role, I could see it being played the same way they did, uh, Thanos in Guardians of the Mm. Galaxy, the first one, uh, but if they don't go for that, if they go with him being the main villain for Ant-Man, even though I see it as a very entertaining movie and I see it like definitely living up to like what the director was saying, like it being a lot more epic than the uh, previous two, um, you know, and I think I'll still have a good time personally. I'm just like wondering how like overall like, you know, Avengers and Marvel fans are going to feel about him being used in just Ant-Man. So that's like what I'm more curious about. It's like the fan reaction from it, because I I. I'm not like as big on Marvel as I am with DC, but I still like enjoy Marvel a lot. And so King the Conqueror is not a villain that I'm like super familiar with, but I got a friend who, you know, has been wanting King the Conqueror for a long time in the uh, MCU. And he was hoping that he was going to be the big phase four villain. So that's, that's my thing is I'm just curious how Marvel fans are going to feel about it. Me personally, I think it's going to be so cool. And I, I actually personally love the idea of like, you know, the threats that Ant-Man has been fighting in the past have been, very like i mean and if you look at ant-man 2 the main villain wasn't even like a villain at all you know that kind of a thing so it would be kind of an interesting challenge for scott to go from you know most of the villains we face aren't like huge threats in the grand scheme of things to now it's like oh no now this is a really big threat and you know we don't have backup for this it's just ant-man and the wasp for, uh, for this one 
Yeah, and, and trust me, I'm definitely one of those fans that was certainly hoping, like, can I please get me a King of Conqueror? Because it is one of those things, like, after Thanos, where exactly do you go? And one of the names that has been brought up plenty of times as to where you can embark on for it as far as villains goes is King the Conqueror as far as, like, just how big uh, of a well-known um, uh, Marvel character he certainly is, especially when it comes to just the rogues gallery for Avengers and just a bunch of uh, Marvel characters in general. Like, King the Conqueror just makes Makes sense in regards to who your next big bad certainly would be so like for me kang just isn't a one-off like even though it does say here that he could be playing a role in ant-man 3 i gotta think that there's there's a much bigger plan sort of in place for this character than just hey you're just now going to be the main villain of ant-man so i really do think that Jonathan Majors is probably going to be have a more significant role than just what we're getting in ant-man because if you think about it oh, well when it comes to Marvel, at least, King the Conqueror, I feel like, could just open the doors to so many different storylines that we have. Um, the idea of Young Avengers, if I'm not mistaken, I believe Young Avengers comic book was started based off of solely a King the Conqueror uh, storyline that kind of like forced these uh, young teenagers to kind of come together, these sidekicks trying to become heroes, if you will. So I, I have a feeling that maybe King the Conqueror is being brought in here um, to maybe, I, I don't want to get too far ahead of my myself but maybe the idea of launching off something eventually like the young avengers i mean we have seen the idea of kate bishop being introduced in the hawkeye series um the idea of uh, scott lang's daughter now being older and things like that as well uh because i think she goes on to become stature um so uh, i th definitely do think that they are um there definitely are things already in place uh that would certainly work perfectly well if they were to introduce somebody like the king the conqueror uh for a phase four or even phase five going forward so for me i'm definitely under the belief that while he they're calling him possibly the main villain for ant-man i feel like there's more to it than that that whether or not he is going to have that thanos guardian of the galaxy type role where he's not he he is the main villain right the, the overseer if you will but there's still somebody else or a bigger issue that scott and maybe hank and them have to deal with um uh, in Ant-Man 3, but but we'll see. I just feel like Kang the Conqueror is too big for one movie. If they're going to introduce him in Ant-Man, pro he probably has bigger plans, but that's that's just what my I'm assuming, though. You also do bring up a good point with uh, uh, Scott Lang's daughter as well, and the fact that we're being introduced with, to uh, Kate Bishop. Essentially, uh, with everything going on, it would be really easy to set up a Young Avengers movie, so if they wanted to set him up here, it would be the perfect way to... Uh, connect the young avengers to them later on because yeah with uh you know scott lang's daughter possibly becoming a superhero later on and being part of the uh, new avengers she could be that you know connective uh, tissue there yeah, that's what, I, that's what I'm definitely hoping for. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, when it comes to the mind of Kevin Feige, uh, you really have no idea the direction in which this man is going. Uh, but uh, his brilliant mind, for sure, um, probably has something uh, in mind uh, or up his sleeve for King the Conqueror. So um, I think it's a, a great casting. I think Jonathan Majors is a fantastic actor. Uh, and his, his, his star is definitely rising, for sure. So I'm glad Marvel uh, has recognized his talent and certainly brought him in for uh, potentially a, a huge role like King the Conqueror, because I think he could definitely have some impact uh on the mcu so uh any last words Stuart, in regards to that uh i think it's gonna kick a lot of ass <laughs> yeah i definitely definitely agree with you there 